Recently, I found out that the High Desert Museum opened an exhibit called Patterns at Play, Fractals in Nature. And I freaked. I had to check it out for myself. So what are fractals and why was I so excited? Well, first of all, fractals were first discovered not in nature, but at the dawn of the computer age. And before there were fractals, there was a man named Benoit Mandelbrot and the Mandelbrot set. You see, back in the late 90s, my roommate brought home a video hosted by Arthur C. Clarke. He's the guy who wrote 2001 A Space Odyssey. And it was about something called the Mandelbrot set, or M-set. Something that people were calling the thumbprint of God. Little did I know, that video would change the direction of my life. Check this out. On March 7, 1980, a mathematician working at IBM named Benoit Mandelbrot took his big brain and a bunch of mathematical concepts that are way beyond the average mind, reduced them down into a fairly simple formula, fed that formula into one of IBM's computers, and stumbled on what history now calls the Mandelbrot set, or M-set. The Mandelbrot set is a real geometrical figure, one that anyone can see and study. Heck, you can even check it out on your phone right now. What makes it special is that when you zoom in on a part of it, you can just keep zooming in and keep zooming in until infinity. For me, it helped my very finite mind realize that there are things that are infinite in the universe. I was so obsessed with it that I named my rock band after the Mandelbrot set, and it also was the spark that became a flame that led me to becoming a meteorologist. To understand what an M-set is, we have to go way back in the evolution of humans. For thousands of years, humans had been noticing patterns in nature all around them. But pretty soon, the artists and architects of the times from every culture brought new life to these patterns. Then in the 18th and 19th century, even mathematicians got in on the action. They started finding patterns in geometry. It wasn't uh, until the 20th century that Benoit Mandelbrot came along. He was a mathematician, worked for IBM. He's a computer guy. And for centuries, these mathematicians had been very wary of trying to apply math to nature. Nature looked chaotic. It looked messy. How could it possibly these beautiful, perfect math equations be applied to these wild looking agates or trees or mountain ranges or coastlines? And Benoit was really special because he said, I think I can develop something called, he called fractal geometry, which was to use math, this type of geometry, to really begin to measure nature's patterns. He used computers to do this on a really large scale. So he was actually the first to coin the term fractal. If you're a blockbuster movie fan, you can thank fractals for the explosion of deeply intricate computer-generated graphics. You see, in the late 80s, a man by the name of Michael Barnsley found a way to turn fractal geometry into fractal image compression. It basically means you can take a large computer file, use fractal geometry to compress it to a fraction of its original size, then later use it again to uncompress the file back to its original resolution. If fractals are still confusing to you, they probably should be. It'll begin to make more sense next week when we get our first peek inside the High Desert Museum and transition from the digital world to the natural one. For Central Oregon Daily News, I'm Scott Elness.